So if you watched my previous video, you will know that I gush and love the UI16 from Soundcraft. Now I am a Soundcraft dealer. So take everything I say here with a grain of salt because uh, yeah, I, I may be giving them a bit more of a benefit of a doubt than I should. But uh, in my opinion, the Wi-Fi in this might actually be fine at least in my experience, right? Your mileage may vary. If you've had some other issues, let me know in the comments and uh, we, you know, we can go from there. But for me, the two major issues that I have seen with the Wi-Fi on this have been user errors or just settings issues for general uh, devices. So to start, I installed one of these in a local hall and they were having what seemed to be connectivity problems. But every time I would go there, I wasn't having any issues. Now, they were running the stock Wi-Fi antenna one room over from where they had the unit put in. So I had a suspicion that it might just be a range issue. So we installed a secondary router and it seemed to solve a lot of those problems because just the distance, right? Like the, the stock Wi-Fi on here, is actually way better than I think it used to be. I'm pretty sure there were some quirks when the thing was first released that they fixed in firmware, but the range isn't as good as a dedicated router. So I put one on like the second I got this thing because I wanted it just to always make sure I had enough range. And yeah, sure enough, I've never had a any major connectivity issues going quite a ways away, including like outdoor events and stuff. Like it, it does really solve any range issues you might be having. So we installed that router, seemed to solve the problem. And for you, that might be all you need, right? If you're running into disconnectivity problems, try an external router. You don't need an expensive one. I like this was a $30, uh, I think it's a D-Link or something or what I use? Yeah, D-Link. Anyway, uh, yeah, you, you just find yourself a cheap router and, and it might solve a bunch of problems for, in terms of range and stability in that regard. But then we started to run into another quirk. And this one is kind of my fault, but I'm going to blame Amazon for this. I recommended an Amazon Fire tablet to be in the hall, ready to go, left connected to this thing, so that they always had a touchscreen thing available to run it. The reason I recommend the Amazon one, it's dirt cheap, right? Amazon, the problem with their tablet, in my opinion, is that it locks you into the Amazon store. That's the reason they sell it for like at or below cost, right? It's the whole Xbox and PlayStation thing where they're selling a console below cost and they make it up on the back end. That is the goal of those Amazon Fire tablets, as far as I'm aware. Seem like a really good deal. They go to use it. And if you've ever used like public Wi-Fi, and then you go to open up your browser and it brings you to like the login screen for it with that like captive dot whatever, that was sort of happening with this. You would log on to the UI 16's uh, Wi-Fi network, and it would instantly send you to a web page that had the was asking for the credentials to be allowed to edit the settings on here. That login method would do something really weird on that particular device, where you'd have this like red banner across the uh, the web browsers page that wouldn't go away. It was normally blue. I don't know why it was red. And a bunch of the touchscreen stuff, like adjusting the gain, would be like super super laggy. Uh, switching from page to page uh, in the UI. It just, it was awful. But if you closed that and went, opened the regular browser, everything worked fine. <laughs> so whatever settings, that weird captive browser thing that it like auto opened when you logged on to the, uh, the Wi-Fi network, whatever settings exist in that, because I cannot figure the thing out for the life of me, was there was some weird incompatibility problem that as soon as you open the regular thing, it would go away. But that sucks if that is your house device. If that is the device that the people there are using all the time and you have multiple sound techs using it, right? For me, that'd be fine. I know, oh, okay, get exit out of there, click, okay, problem solved. But now every person who uses that mixer at this community hall 
has to know how to do that. And it, it just did not work really well. So that device caused a whole bunch more headaches. And I don't know what was going on. Like I actually cannot solve the problem other than on the tablet, exit out of that browser, open the regular browser, it always worked. Okay, cool. <laughs> so we found a solution, um, but I don't know what the actual cause of the problem was, right? If you're like, I'm, I'm a sound tech, I'm not a computer technician, right? If you work in IT and you think you might know what causes something like that, uh, do let me know because I'm actually legit curious how the heck that happens and why that would happen. Uh, and far as I can tell, I don't really want to put that one on Soundcraft shoulders because like I say, it works perfectly fine on my phone. We're perfectly fine on my tablet. And then this Amazon tablet was doing this weird thing. So if you're having any issues like that, anything like I've just described, close out of that browser, open up your regular browser or install Chrome or Firefox or something and see if that solves the problem. Now, carrying on, the other weird issue they were having was constant disconnects that I wasn't having when I came there. My phone, my tablets, anything I tested on their system would be rock solid while I was there. But they even showed me their phone disconnecting from this unit and them getting a disconnection error. I think I figured it out. So if you have a UI 16, whatever device you are using, you need to go in and turn off the automatically connect on anything that isn't this. Because if there is so much as the tiniest hiccup in your connection, your phone is going to prioritize other networks. That's for two reasons. One is if the house Wi-Fi, like the Wi-Fi that's surrounding you there, happens to have a stronger signal than this, it just it, it's just going to go with the strongest signal. It's going to say, oh, that one's the strongest signal. Let's go with that. The other is devices really like being connected to the internet. <laughs> I... I kid you not, every time that I log on to this thing, I get all of these silly warnings. This doesn't have internet connection. Are you sure you want to connect to this Wi-Fi that doesn't have internet connection? How dare you not connect to internet? Right? No. Yeah, I'm trying to purposefully connect to this to use it. <laughs> but because like Android devices, Apple, uh, like uh, uh, Mac OS, that kind of stuff, it all really wants to be on the internet. Uh, Windows does it too, but I, I just know my settings better in Windows so I can make sure it doesn't happen. Uh, so it never happened on my Windows stuff. That will cause some weird disconnects and things like that. So if you have other Wi-Fi signals available that you have the login credentials for, in some cases, if they have an open internet, make sure you turn that off too, right? Um, I, I don't think you have to go as far as making it forget passwords and stuff, but you do have to make sure the automatic connect is turned off on everything except for this thing. Or it often, I've had devices, even if I don't have any hiccups on my connection to here, it'll just switch over because <laughs> that's the stronger signal. You want the stronger signal, right? And I hate it. I hate it but it, I don't think that is Soundcraft's fault. That is these modern devices that just want to be connected to the strongest signal with internet, which kind of makes sense, right? Especially like that Amazon tablet, that thing thrives on being connected to the internet. Amazon doesn't make any money off of you if their tablet is not connected to the internet. So it's gonna do everything it can to make sure it's connected to the internet. But those are the two major issues I ran into troubleshooting a UI 16. And again, both of those issues, I didn't really, I still don't really think are Soundcraft's problem. <laughs> I think it's a device issue. The range side of it, that third issue I mentioned at the beginning, uh, yeah, if you need more range, uh, put an external router on it, you will have uh, way stronger signal. And it may also solve that last issue we were talking about of uh, your devices trying to log on to other things because you'll have a stronger signal and it'll at least reduce the chance of it saying, oh no, but that other one's stronger, we should connect to that, all right? So like I said, turn off all of those and, and you, might, you might find yourself having an easier time. Uh, the captive internet login thing, uh, that I don't have no idea how to fix other than closing the browser and opening up the proper browser that you actually wanna use. I don't know why it does that. 
I don't know if that's just an Amazon tablet thing, but if your device, like especially like a phone, uh, and like it's Android based, so if you have an Android device that is potentially a problem you might run into, that is the solution I found. Um, but that seems to be, like I said, whatever settings are attached to that, uh, that browser that it auto opens. But yeah, like I said, uh, two kind of three issues that I think are really easy to resolve and two of which I don't think Soundcraft can really do anything about. It'd be nice if they put in a uh, higher end, more robust Wi-Fi uh, system in there. Uh, they do in the higher end version, uh, but the one in here, I've had no problems with. So your mileage may vary, but uh, other than it not having the range that I want, I think any early uh, early reviews that were saying that like the Wi-Fi on it was uh, kind of junk, um, they fixed that in firmware outside of the range issue. So uh, good on you, Soundcraft, for supporting this uh, unit and putting out you know, firmware updates and stuff. Um, I'm hoping for a new firmware update in the near future um, that hopefully will make some of these uh, things even more robust. But uh, yeah, I, like I said, a lot of the problems that people have been having with this, if you're having similar problems with this, I just don't know if I can put any of it on to Soundcraft. But you can, because it was their choice to have it be a Wi-Fi connected device. And the problems with it being a Wi-Fi connected device come along with that. But I'm going to take that in exchange for not having to get an app and do this like Bluetooth thing and like have issues of like, oh, but is that app still running with, uh, you know, Android 85 or whatever the heck we end up with at some point, right? No, as long as it can run HTML5, I think it is, like just a website, it should work with the device. It's just a matter of making sure it can stay locked onto that Wi-Fi and opening a proper browser. Who knew? Hopefully, somebody out there found this useful or interesting. Uh, again, I wouldn't let you. Uh, I wouldn't let it turn you off from picking up a UI 16. I think these things are brilliant, and I think they're a really good value. But you should be aware of what you're getting into, right? You do need to know a bit about how Wi-Fi works to log in and do some of the stuff on here, you have to type in the IP address potentially. It's written on the back. It's really easy to remember when it's written for you. But if you've never had to log on to something using an IP address, that could be a learning curve for you, right? So just be aware, uh, like I said, that going non-app based has its benefits, but then does open up some potential issues that just come with being a Wi-Fi connected device. Now I'm rambling, I'm looping, I'm tired, I'm gonna go eat some soup, but I'll see you in the next video.